welcome to today's episode of the Balanced Approach Podcast. I'm your host, Lou Padian. I hope that you're doing well and are enjoying the podcast and the topics we've covered so far. These podcasts are released every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to subscribe wherever you are listening to be kept up to date. So today we will be covering my top four ways to lose weight with a desk job that goes just beyond a calorie deficit. The reason I want to talk about this is it's a common struggle that I find when I've worked with people, especially within the NHS, I've struggled with myself. And it's really hard when you want to make these healthy changes, but you feel like you're tied to a desk all day, not able to move, that your weight is either creeping up or the effort that you're making to try and lose weight isn't really helping at all and nothing seems to be working. And I know personally, I felt really frustrated, especially when I started a new desk job, that it was as if nothing was working personally. And it sort of led to an area of boredom as well, that often I would bored me. And with my back issues and things like that, it probably added to sort of a level of physical discomfort as well. So one of the things that I've worked on a lot with other people as well is that it's often motivated through wanting to feel more comfortable in wanting to feel more confident but also there can be these health conditions that can be improved by managing our weight such as cardiovascular disease diabetes and joint pain and this is one of the things that actually when i worked in the nhs and got a desk job there i was supporting people in these problems as well so it was quite ironic that i found to be struggling myself and i could really empathize with their struggles because i was there to a desk so these top four tips aren't the only top tips that there are out there but They can be really impactful, especially if you implement them day to day, week to week and are consistent with them. As most things are, consistency is key. So my first tip would be to prep your food and bring it in. It's one of the biggest hurdles I often see with people is office snacking or sort of mindless snacking. And planning your meals or snacks at home and bringing them in actually have a bit more control and helps you almost set that boundary with foods that you're less tempted to mindlessly mindlessly snack and when someone brings in cakes for a birthday or a celebration or there's a cake sale downstairs that you're a bit more secure in you acting in line with your goals and the key with this is that one of the things I often see people struggle with is that they potentially prep really healthy but bland food and the key here is to obviously make it nutritious make sure the portions in line with what you're trying to achieve but there's a huge thing that can be said for having these prepped meals to be really satisfying that you're actually looking forward to them that they're really tasting and just shameless plug here that if you are looking for inspiration with your foods in the link below you'll be able to find my free five day recipe pack and meal plan that has lots of tasty nutritious recipes for you to use and can really make the difference in you eating and staying almost on track with your planned eating for the week and as we go into this it's so important that having this structure and routine with your food can help you regain that momentum with your weight loss so first tip is to plan and bring in your food one thing that i've touched on there which is the second tip is setting boundaries with your food office environments are often full of tempting treats and snacks people bring them in offering snacks to you and they often have the best intentions and they're not doing it out of spite or anything like that but establishing boundaries with your food and you personally committing to that can really help with calories really budging over into that weight maintenance and weight gain sort of realm where we're aiming for that weight loss sort of goal that we're trying to achieve so early on in the week or from now forward sort of deciding on your daily weekly intake of calories which can be very personal to you and they can have a bit of flexibility with them but also deciding on your almost like boundaries and limits with snacks as well things that if people are offering in or if you hear something coming up can be really useful to almost set that in tone go well once or twice a week I'll allow myself that flexibility of having one and really enjoying it and another key boundary that you can set to avoid that mindless eating and allow you to be more mindful which is no is really on trend at the moment around your eating is setting key boundaries of where you eat and where you don't eat so one of the key things that I struggled with initially and I've struggled with in the past is sitting down and doing a task on my computer and eating away 
and we know that and we'd call that mindless snacking and it's something that I see a lot of patients and clients as well that we can easily work on by going right so am I working or am, am I eating and setting that boundary of well I don't eat while I work if I'm eating I go somewhere else I leave that environment into another environment like the, the kitchen or somewhere else where I, I purposely eat and enjoy that food rather than sitting on my computer probably not being as productive as I could be work-wise but then also not really enjoying the food that I'm eating and both of those don't quite match up to a positive outcome either way so setting boundaries with your food and where you're eating can be a really useful and that is my second tip the third tip would be incorporating regular walks so having short five to ten minute walks regularly throughout the day can really add up across a week and month and can really add to the energy expenditure and increase the amount of calories you burn and helping with that weight loss one of the key things i see is that the office environment probably doesn't promote a sort of health or they talk about it but don't actually implement anything and one thing that we did in our office and the care coordinators I worked with in the NHS were really, really big fans of when they could was like, right, early in the morning, we're going to get out for a five, 10 minute walk, get some fresh air, head down the road as a group, just chat and catch up in general. It's really good for your social well-being as well. But getting that extra activity in there can really help with productivity, but also health and well-being and increasing that calorie expenditure. So setting regular alarms can be really useful to avoid that prolonged sitting, as we know that's obviously not very good for us in the long term sitting down for long periods of time we're meant to be quite active beings and can really help with reminding you and bringing in that mindfulness around your physical activity in this one of the things that i see often people neglecting is their lunch break your break is meant to be a break away from work but also a chance for you to move a little bit more in one of my previous jobs which ironically was in a nutrition job we sat at our desk and ate our food in front of our computer for our lunch breaks and actually one of the best things that we can do is getting out for a regular walk and one of the things that can be easy promoted is right let's go for a short walk again 10-15 minutes it doesn't have to be take up the whole of your lunch break but it can really help you in feeling a lot better improving your energy levels and also ensuring that you're getting away from your desk that again you're not slipping into that mindless eating at your desk and within this as well a, another interesting thing that could be really useful can actually make meetings a lot more productive is to have standing or walking meetings and this is something that i've seen implemented in a lot of office environments to improve the productivity of meetings but also improve the health aspects as well people tend not to beat around the bush too much when they are on their feet or they're walking they tend to actually get to the point a lot more so spending a bit more time on your feet during these meetings can make them a lot shorter making sure that they're time efficient but also get that extra calorie burn as well which we know is going to help with your weight loss so incorporating regular walks throughout the day can be really useful and that is my third tip my fourth and final tip would be to get an activity tracker or keep an activity diary. So again, linking with incorporating regular walks, but this is just to avoid prolonged sitting really and having something that actually allows you to measure and monitor your steps per day or your physical activity can make you really aware of how much you're moving day to day and i know we've spoken about sort of the 10,000 steps a day rule and actually just doing a little bit more can have huge benefits and up to about six or seven thousand steps actually we get a huge amount of health benefits long term with regards to lots of health consequences such as cardiovascular disease and all cause mortality really that it can give you a little reminder your activity watch not even just to go for a walk but to just stand up stretch off loosen off and just burn those extra calories throughout the day but also just move a little bit as we can really seize up if we're not doing it if you haven't got an active track you don't actually need one most smartphones tend to monitor your steps daily and across the day inside and outside of work you can really get those extra steps by going for those 10 15 minute walks before work after work moving using sort of public transport and incorporating that parking further away and outside of work as well at the weekends just being a bit more mindful and you can see trends throughout the week of when you're more active when you're less active and put plans in place to reduce the amount of times where you're less active and take advantage and notice trends of when you're more active and what you're actually actually doing right there so fourth and final tip is to get an activity track or keep an activity diary 
So there you have it. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode of the Balanced Approach podcast. If you have any questions, queries, or would like to reach out to me, please do. I am at Louis Padian Nutrition, which is at L-O-U-I-S P-A-D-I-A-N Nutrition on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and all of the social media platforms. If you're looking for support in achieving your goals and living a healthier, happier, and more balanced life in the process, click the link below and inquire about working with me. Remember to subscribe to the Balanced Approach podcast wherever you're listening for more insightful episodes and I look forward to speaking to you soon.